Gym owners, is your website costing you new members? The answer is yes for 50% of you. 50%. No, no, no. no. The, answer, the answer is 80%. 80% of people. 80? Explain yourself. So I was uh, searching the internet like I normally do, and I looked at 20 random gym websites to test a call to action. 40% of them had no call to action whatsoever. So you just go to the website and there's a picture and doesn't tell you what to do. Uh, Another 40% of them have an indirect call to action. So it'll say like, become your best self or schedule or invigorate. And, mm -hmm. and you click a button and it takes you to some random destination. And then for the lucky 20%, uh, there was a very clear call to action telling people what the next step is and how to buy. So if you do not have a clear call to action on your website, you're in 80% and you're missing out on sales. My name is Mike Workin and this is Run a Profitable Gym. My guest here today is John Franklin. He is the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer at Two Brain Business. He's also the co-founder at Kilo. He knows marketing and he knows websites. So we're going to get into this and explain how you can move from the 80% of gym owners who are missing sales to the 20% who are making sales and recouping their website costs and more by converting clients on their website. So John, tell me again, what, what are we looking for for people who don't understand what is a clear call to action on a website? What do we need? It's simple, man. It's literally telling people how to give you money. So if you are uh, a gym owner above the fold, so that is the area you see right when you go to your website um, or right when you go to the site on your mobile phone, there should be a uh, what you are. So it should say like, I'm a gym. It should say like, what type of people you're looking to get. Uh, you should probably have where you're located and you should tell people what the next step is. So if you are somebody who sells access to your gym, you should have a way to directly buy a membership. And if you are someone who sells uh, something a little more complicated, like coaching, it should tell people how to book an intro. Okay. So when I had my gym, when I set up my gym website in uh, 2010, I believe it was, uh, I had a cool picture of a bloody shins and some other stuff. I had a big banner at the top and then I had the workout of the day. And then I had, you know, that's the sweet. menu. That's good. That's cool. And it worked, it worked in 2010. How, how, how many millions did you make from that website? <laughs> no millions whatsoever. Uh, and in right. fact, if I would go back to that website, it's been since upgraded, obviously. But if I would go back to the website and try to figure out how to train at this gym, it would have taken me like six, seven clicks maybe. Right. So what? And, like, that's cool though. That's cool. Yeah. Like when CrossFit was a hobby and most of the affiliate owners had a full-time job and the gym was something they did with their buddies in the side. And it exactly was more me. like a motorcycle gang instead of a business. Yeah, that was sweet. And uh, it would look really cool and it'd be hard to understand. And that's why like only your friends worked out there and <laughs> only some of them paid you. And we did tend to get like some ex-military guys, hardcore athletes, people who knew the secret past. We did get those people. We did not get the average person. And that's now where we're at try in gyms. We're past the early adopter phase where all the like the Navy SEALs have already found us. We're now trying to connect with other people and they can't figure out what we do and how to do it. So is there like a quick test, like a five second test that a gym owner can do or have a friend do on their website to help them figure out what's missing? Yeah, it's literally called the five second test. Okay, what it's is something it? that we pay people to do both for like the two brain site and then for any gym website we make at Kilo. And it's as simple as like taking somebody who's unfamiliar with your website, having them sit down in front of the site and just showing them for five seconds and then ask them like, what does the business do? Like, what does this business do? Uh, who does the business serve? Where is it located? Does it look trustworthy? And uh, does it look professional? And you should get all the information you need just based off of that five second test. And you just continue to make tweaks and rotate different copy and header images until people have a idea of what it is your business does, what it is you sell and how they can buy from you in just that five second snippet. So you did this essentially for 20 gyms near you and you found that 80% of them didn't have the, the things that would check all those boxes. So the five second test and the me screwing around with websites near me are two two separate things. So the yeah. the eighty the percent thing, this is like not a peer reviewed white paper. Like this is me right. going on Google Maps and shopping for a gym in my area, and I looked at twenty different websites, and then I just uh, marked no call to action, good call to action, bad yeah, yeah. call to action. So a straw. So, yeah, exactly. So that's not going to be published in any like peer reviewed medical journal anytime soon or like a journal of scientific marketing. Um, but the five second test is like uh, 
pretty standard. Like there are, there are companies that just do this. So you can go and like actually pay them to do the user experience testing for you. If you don't have the skill to pay a fancy UX testing firm, what you can do is uh, just like go to a mall food court and set up a laptop and be like, hey, I got this stack of Starbucks gift cards. Can you sit here and like literally do this? Um, and so that's kind of like the, the, the ghetto way to get your five second test done. If you are somebody who likes DIYing your website. So look, give me, give me a little bit of data or experience that you've had. What, when someone or a company does these five te second tests, how many gyms fail or how many websites fail? Is it really like a really high number or is it getting better? There's no, it's not like pass fail, right? Like you don't get like A, B, C, D, E. It's just like, uh, this percentage of people can answer this question. This percentage of people can answer this other question. Uh, we would re recommend making this switch, like changing the word from fitness to gym or changing, like adding the location below the button instead of above the button. Like there are little tweaks or, you know, this piece of font needs to be bigger versus this piece of font needs to be smaller. Um, so, so there is no wrong answer. It's just like, what is the thing that is most important? And are you making that the most prominent thing? And is it clear how people can buy from you? So how many, how many, what percentage of gyms, I'll just ask you to guesstimate this one. How many of them do you think have a suboptimal site based on that five second test? Like stuff could be improved measurably to actually improve their sales and marketing results. Are we going to include like sophisticated franchises? Now to talk about like, the micro, the general micro gym, like let's leave out like the planet fitnesses and the, probably those big businesses and franchises that have probably already done this research. To research, talk to me about like the average micro gym owner who's independent. Right. Cause most like sophisticated, um, facility owners, like multi-facility or franchise owners, like they're going to have a solid website and they're going to do this. They're going to pay somebody to do this. Testing has been done. Pretty standard issue. But if I'm looking at like your standard, I opened a warehouse gym and I hacked together my own website. Um, you know, it, I would, I would probably say like one in four with a good clear call to action. And that is like significantly improved over the fact, like the past five years, like, the, like we're moving, we're trending in the right direction. <laughs> it's simply because you have to, right? Like the people who like couldn't figure out how to make a website, like they went out of business already. And so it's a lot more like, and let me clarify, like I live in one of the most competitive markets in uh, the United States. Like I live in South Florida. There is so much gym density here. It's so expensive to advertise and you still see like, 80% of gyms just like flushing down potential opportunities under the toilet. Where like if they were to go and find a lead on Facebook, like that's probably going to cost you between 40 and $60 when they just put a button on their website or had a clear way to like collect an email address. Uh, you know, I would guarantee you it would probably make them a thousand dollars or more every single month. So with Kilo, have you seen gyms with poor websites convert to a tested researched website with a clear call to action and then dramatically improve marketing numbers. Is that common? Yeah. It's so weird. If you have a good website, you sell more memberships is crazy how that works. So let's give Jim owners something that they can do right now. Obviously, if you want a kilo to take care of it for you, contact them, but like what can gym owners do if they look at their site, what do they do when they think like, okay, my five second test isn't working very well. I clearly don't have a call to action. I have a clue what to do. What are some steps they can take to make things better? All right, so let's use something I call the ABC framework. And the A is a the A stands for above the fold. And that's what we talked about already. That's just called your hero section. Again, like say you're a gym, tell people where you are and give them a button that gets them closer to buy, right? Like if you just do that, uh, you made your money back on the podcast. All right. So that's the that's the one takeaway. Just do that. Now I'm gonna jump in and I'm just gonna tell you this. If you have that button on your site, click it once in a while and see if it actually works because I've clicked on many, many buttons that are broken and lead to dead pages and all sorts of stuff. If someone actually clicks on your site, it better take them where they want to go. Sure. So we get the DIY warriors in uh, the Two Brain Facebook group, Gym Owners United. Uh, just go to gymownersunited.com. There's about 7,000 gym owners there and we just share helpful stuff in there. Um, yeah, you get a lot of the DIY warriors like, hey, I use GoDaddy for my website. And you know, every single time I've gone on one of those sites, like it only takes me about a minute to find a typo, a broken form, an unclear call to action. Uh, you know, something that's broken and that's fine. Like I understand some people prefer to tinker with their site and that's totally cool if that's your thing. And then some people just do it because they say like they can't afford a professionally done site. But the reality is, is like you can't afford to not have a, pro a professionally done site. Like it's definitely not an expense. It's an, it's an asset. Like, especially if you're paying uh, marketing costs to like get those people to your site. 
Yeah. Well, even if you're not right, like your, your Google search is going to be the biggest driver if you're not doing ads to get people onto your um, like actual website. So that's a different game, right? You want to make sure that you optimize for local SEO, but once you're on your actual site, like, you know, the, the, the percentage of those leads that you convert, like if you can tick that up by five to 10% over the five-year course of like a, a business, like that is a uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars swing in recurring revenue if you got your packaging and pricing uh, squared away. And if you listen to this podcast, you probably do. Mm -hmm. So that's above the fold call. Like, give me an example. What's a clear call to action? Some people won't even know what that is. So like, what is buy, very, right? buy now? Yeah. And, book and, a then, call. and then it takes you to a place where you can buy now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Book a call and it takes you to a calendar and you can select an appointment, right? Like those are the two cleanest, clearest, uh, some people have like an intro offer. So like two weeks free or something like that, or get a free day pass. Like that is a clear call to action. Um, it's definitely not one, like I would necessarily recommend, but, um, you know, different models have seen success doing that. Um, and outside of that, uh, there's not much else. So, uh, join our exciting community. Would that be considered a strong call to action? It would not. Mm -hmm. Um, if you, if you want, like, Again, don't take my word for it. Just go to like a sophisticated player in the space. Like go to somebody who's selling tens of millions of fitness stuff a year, like a beach body or a Zumba, or like go look at an orange theory and look at the amount of times they have like a learn more button on their page. It's like very rare. And if there is like, I guarantee you click learn more and it's like, buy now. <laughs> like, so yeah. yeah and I'll, I'll compare that again to my website circa 2010, where there was, you would have to work to find a way in. That's the exact right. opposite of what you're recommending. You're recommending a website, you know, not as a presentation for your photography and your workouts, but as a part of your funnel. And if you think about it, it's like all these book now, buy now, whatever buttons or trap doors that lead into your business, as opposed to like, do your cool workout video or stuff. It has to get people moving down the funnel to buy from you. Is that right? Yeah. And you want it to be frictionless too. Like one mistake we see all the time with uh, CrossFit gyms, especially, is they try and create as much sales friction as humanly possible on that front end purchase. So rather than being like, here's how to start, it's really easy. And then like all of a sudden you're doing CrossFit, you know, it's like you have to join our on-ramp class and it happens every third Thursday. And then you have to do six personal training sessions. And then if you pass the personal training test, you can take classes on Tuesday and Wednesday with a level one coach that's scaled. And like, you just create all these jargon and friction points that makes it very difficult and very intimidating for somebody to come and join your gym. So if that's the case, uh, just don't mention that on your website, um, <laughs> but but you should probably fix that. Like if, if you have to jump through like 35 hoops to join your actual gym and like experience the thing, like there's probably a problem with that business in the first place. Um, but but yeah, make joining and starting and ex the explanation of that process as effortless as humanly possible. Yeah. Don't make people get a decoder ring to figure out how to get into your gym. The simplest thing is if you want to join this gym to get these results, come see us and talk to us. We'll ease it. You know, the whole free consultation notes would enter the two brain teaches. And the route to that is book a free consultation or book now or anything like that. Uh, talk to me. You talked about uh, above the fold. I think we're on B and C. What else we got here? Yeah. So below the fold. Um, and again, just to be clear, if we're talking like Prado's principle, 80, 20, like 80% of the results happen above the fold. So mm -hmm. just focus on that before we do these other ones. And, and C is a subset of A. C stands for clear directions on how to start. So we've technically done A and C already. Okay, what's we, B? We've beaten a dead horse. We know like you should tell people to buy your stuff on your website and you should make sure the buying mechanism or, or the sales mechanism actually works. All right? So I so land now and I can't, and I'm going to, but I haven't seen enough to make me click right away above the fold. I'm scrolling. What do you need? Yeah. So we got below the fold, right? And so there you're looking at a brief description of your core service, social proof, and a secondary call to action. All right. So brief description of a core service. Let's say you are driving down the road, you see a restaurant and it says world's best burgers, right? You're going to look at that restaurant. You're gonna be like, I'm probably going to get a burger. Um, and so this is cool. Like this is a good looking burger restaurant. Now, let's say you're driving down the road, you see the exact same restaurant, the sign out front says, this is the world's best cheeseburgers, tacos, and sushi. Like, you're probably going to think that is a little sus. Uh, and your general impression, if you're from Earth, is that this is probably not a great restaurant. And I'm very dubious if they are the best in the world at all these things. And my dad so, told me one time, John, my dad, one of the greatest pieces of advice he ever gave me, do not get a burger from a seafood place and do not get seafood from a burger place. And you just hit it. 
And do not be a seafood burger place. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so the same is true in fitness, right? You see a lot of gyms that are like, we offer the best yoga and weightlifting and we have our powerlifting class mm-hmm. and we have group training and semi-private training and nutrition and nutrition programs. And that's all like highlighted on their, uh, like the centerpiece of their site. And they're just going to like, this is going to confuse somebody who's on your site, like all these different offerings. Um, if you're the best in the world at personal training or your core services group class, and that is the thing that you want people to buy, that is the thing I would highlight. So think of the world's best burger or the world's best pie. Like, you know, you, you want to be the world's best at the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it could be locally world's best, you know, <laughs> locally world famous <laughs> at personal training. World's best. <laughs> yeah. All right. So so that's the core, that's the core service description. The next piece is social proof. And social proof is so crucial for gyms. Like we can do an hour conversation just on social proof, but Mm -hmm. um, the dirty is like you want before and after photos. Uh, If you look at any of these gyms that charge, you know, $3,000 a month packages, like the reason they do that is because they have proven beyond the shadow of the doubt that they are good at getting results. And a lot of these people will take like professional before and after photos. So if they're selling some type of like high ticket transformation program, like they're going to get the sad, like I'm fat before picture, and then they're going to have the touched up well lit after picture. And there's going to be a million of them on their website. Um, the same is true for like a guru type coaching business. Like it's all like I was poor before and now I'm rich, right? Like uh, there's very clear like drivers in psychology that make people want to buy. And if you are the results place, you need to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that you get results and pictures of actual humans getting shredded um, is the best way to do it. So yeah, and you should not chat GPT your way to this stuff, right? Like this, this should be real stuff unless you're a shyster. No, no, no. It's fine. This is a marketing podcast. Generate <laughs> AI, generate your before and after. It's totally fine. Uh, no, at, at an absolute minimum, like you should have three client results. And if you can't get like professional well lit um, before and afters, it, and to be clear, like this is something you can get for a couple hundred bucks, right? You have to plan ahead, um, but it is not like a prohibitively expensive thing for most gyms to do. Um, and the ROI will be insane. But if you can't do that, just get like regular photo pics um, of a member that did like a before and after. If you can't do that, like go to your Google reviews, written testimonials and Facebook posts, just take screenshots of that and put it on your website. Um, But if you're doing any of the latter things that aren't like visually appealing, um, plan to do the first. And if you don't have good transformations, you got to fix your service and there's nothing good marketing, uh, good marketing is going to fix that. And I believe you mentioned secondary call to action in this session section. What is that? Good memory. And so that everyone who comes to your site, not everybody's going to be ready to buy now or book a consultation. So what we recommend is that you have um, a little something extra to collect that email address if they're on their site. Um, most people overthink this and try and make it something really complicated. You can look at any like uh, anybody who sells like a, uh, a workout program online very successfully, like that's like a good place to look because you know they're they're probably testing their their magnets. Um, but at home workouts work really good, like body weight stuff that they can do right away. You can type those up and use Chat GPT to make that. Um, <laughs> and then uh, uh, healthy like healthy desserts do really well, and like uh, healthy recipes. Uh, and then like a grocery shopping guide or checklist is something that we've seen perform well. Um, if like doing something like that is too sophisticated, like setting up the landing page, making sure it gets delivered and making the asset look good. Uh, some people just use their pricing as a secondary call to action. So it's just like, Hey, see our prices. You put your email in and then you email the person, the prices. So this is maybe not a dinner date. This is like a cup of coffee, right? You're just trying to get people to like take a step in a direction and you want their email address, right? Yeah. I mean, we get people to come back and buy two brain after being on the email list for like five, six years. So and that's where your content you know, marketing uh, comes in, right? You're hitting them with stuff all the time, content, sending them things, gifts, singing, communication, nurturing, as we call it. Uh, you're the content marketing ninja. So you're going to have to educate me on that. Uh, <laughs> but, but yes, like ideally you have both. Um, but you know, getting the email, you, you can add the content later on down the road, but if you're creating content, you don't have the emails. It's going to be hard to get people to read it. Um, cause you're probably going to be pretty bad at it when you start. So we won't beat this thing to death. We'll go back and just summarize here in a straw poll, 80% of gyms in John's local market did not have the things on it that would make it easy for him to become a member. So if you extrapolate that to larger gym world, there is about an 80% chance that your website isn't doing 
what it's supposed to be doing unless you're part of a big franchise chain and you know someone who's supplied a website that's already been tested. So if you are that 80%, and you might want to check just by doing that five second test with some friends of yours, or even in a mall with some randos, you can do that. If you are in the 80%, you need to fix this. Now you can do it a couple of different ways. You can get to gym owners United where there's a ton of resources in that site. John and some of the Kilo staff members are constantly posting about this stuff. You can also contact Kilo, uh, you know, you, them just go to Kilo, right? Kilo.com. John, is that where we're sending people? I wish it was Kilo.com. Uh, use Kilo.com. Use Kilo.com. There you go. Yeah, so I, I, I'm i guessing that you looked for the other one and someone tried to e extort you. Oh, no. That's like a Kilo.com is probably like a, a million dollar domain. Yeah, so. that's what I am. Okay. <laughs> but check that out. If you're doing it yourself, figure it out. But the idea is you must have clear calls to action. And if you make some changes to your site, test it again. And if the changes don't, produce the result with the people that you want, change it again, test again. Okay. John, final advice for anyone. What would you do? Well, the one thing they should do right now after this podcast to unscrew their website. Oh, I would just test every form you got. Mm -hmm. like, Enter your information. We, we right? find stuff broken on Kilo stuff like all the time. We have a yep. person who is like literally their full-time job is going into forms and making sure they aren't broken because they break for all kinds of reasons. And this is especially true of your DIY. Like if you're duct taping six, seven pieces of software together in order to deliver lead magnets or do something like pretty complicated, um, or you haven't looked in more than a year, uh, chances are more likely than not that like some critical thing is broken on your site. Your website is not the pyramids. It does not last forever. It is like your vehicle. It needs maintenance and things break all the time. And if you don't test these forms, you won't know it. Test your form. Go to your website as an outsider or even have an outsider do it. Enter your info in these different forms. See what happens. I can tell you from experience, I did that. And a lot of the info just went somewhere that I couldn't figure out. And then I got a better website. I lost sales. John, thanks so much for doing this today. Uh, we'll have you back and we'll talk about some more stuff, but you've given Jim owners a ton to think about. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for having me. This is Run a Profitable Gym. I am Mike Working It. I'd love it if you would subscribe, leave a review, hit a like, whatever platform you're on, give us a little bit of love. And if this helped you out, I'd love you to come back and see us for more information.